Hello, Mr. Red here. Today is January 4th, 2020. I'm in Slidell, Louisiana, and we're going to be removing bees today. Yeah, it's a little chilly. It's probably around, right around 50, maybe a little bit under, but the sun's going to come out. It's early still. We're only about, it's about 8.30 in the morning. Sun's supposed to come out. It's supposed to warm up to about 60, 65. So right now it's overcast, like it's been the last four days, been having a lot of rain. So today is the first day that we have a break in our weather. And I really should be going and pulling bee boxes, but instead I'm here pulling bees instead. So the bees are located in the window right here in this area. Uh, and, and you can see there's some comb already out here. I don't know how long the bees have been here. I wasn't, the, the, the homeowners didn't contact me. The contractor who's going to put the siding on this house, he called me and asked if I could come do this. So he's going to go up here and, and uh, cut the plywood out, move the plywood for me, and then show the bees. And then I'm going to take the bee vac and vacuum these bees up. I got good time Charlie with me. He's downstairs. He'll be helping me on this one. I'll be able to pass the comb down to him. We'll put it in the ice chest. Take it back up to the Abbey, frame it up, and set these girls up. By the grace of God, these bees right here, these slide out bees, they're going to become Abbey honeybees. Let's wrangle. So Roger's removed the plywood for us. And I'm pretty confident that our comb just ends right here, that we don't have to extend anymore. One reason I say that, if you look on the seam, all that is propolized. This whole seam going all the way up. It's propolized, so that would tell me that that's the end of the hive. And then if we look at the plywood itself, you can see the line of propolis right here. And then the discoloration in the wood of this, having all the, the propolized area in here, where the bees traffic, all this is darker, whereas on this wood, it's all nice and brand new looking. So the bees are only in this area of the wall right here. The only thing I don't know is if they're on to the left-hand side, and we're going to open that up right now and see if we do any, have any more comb on the other side. I got my fingers crossed that there's not going to be anything in here. I see insulation on the bottom right here, and I don't, I don't really want to cut on the stud right here because I don't want to give the bees an area for them to run over to this area right here, so I'm trying to contain it right in this area right here. Now there's nothing but clean wood and insulation in here, so our bees are strictly located from this area right here. Wow. We're going to go ahead and remove this tar paper and then get a real good image of what this hob does look like. And there she blows. Huh? Boy, look at all the honey in this. And I even see some brood right there. So I'm going to start vacuuming the bees right away. Got my queen cage. And we're going to be looking for that queen. Vacuuming up bees.
Now there's been a lot of comments made on insulation in honey and is the honey contaminated by insulation? And I want to put that myth to rest because what happens, what the bees do is they'll either one, they'll propolize it, like in this area, this is solid propolis or on top of the insulation. And so they encrust or encapsulate the insulation so that there's no way it can get into the into the hive. They want to contain it, just like they contain their whole hive with propolis, they do that with the insulation as well. They either contain it this way or they'll chew it out like they chewed out this cavity and it, they just deposit down here. Now I see there's termite damage in this as well. But this is this is where the insulation will drop to the bottom and then the, the bees continue to build their comb. There is no contamination of honey or comb with insulation because the bees, as long as the honey is sealed, like, like you'll see in this, all this is sealed, capped honey, there's no insulation in it. And as long as I don't get any insulation on it as I remove it, there is no issue of insulation in the honey. Now this is something that I was totally unexpecting to find, the amount of brood in this hive. Here we are, January 4th, and look look how tight her pattern is. And if you look here, you can see there's even uncapped brood right here. So this is developing larva, as well as up here, there's developing larva. So I'm sure there are eggs in here that I can't see at this moment, and that we have very much an active queen. So. Being that she's active, her rear end should be swollen up pretty good, making her a little bit easier to find. And I bet even the dirt roots are going to be able to find her on this one. Well, how about that for surprises, huh? And I'm sure uh, that Charlie videoed that little spark action. And yep, I didn't know there was a wire in there. And fortunately, <laughs> I didn't get shocked. But there it is. And so now I know that that's in there. At least I can be aware of that and uh, have a little bit more care. So I'm just betting my dollar, bottom dollar that is, that she's going to be down here on this cluster down here. So I'm gonna go ahead and start removing the stuff above it, vacuuming as I go, but she's down here. So I'm, I wanna clean this up because when our bees fall down here, 
I can vacuum them up without getting all this dust inside of them. Plus, if our queen falls down in here, we don't want her in this stuff. So I'm trying to get this stuff out of here, clean it up somewhat to make it to make it better for us and the bees. But as I'm doing this, I'm, I'm looking, I don't want our queen to inadvertently fall in here. Here's some old carcasses of bees right here. Good. Look at that. <laughs> January and you got drones in the hive. We're going to have an early season. Maybe. Yes, indeed. All we have to do now is find the queen. There she is! Woohoo! There she is! Yep. Go slow, go slow. Right there. Come on, baby. You got it, you got it. I do? Uh, yeah. <laughs> there she is. First queen of 2020, baby! But like I said, the rooster could have found her. She was just all lumbering along with that big old butt of hers. Thank you, Jesus. Woo, now we can finish up getting these bees vacuumed up. Move a lot quicker. Let's nice finish, queen. Let's finish this job, Charlie. Let's do it. Well, folks, it ain't there no more. They got all the comb, all the honey, all the bees, and as cool as it is today there's the, the field bees they weren't even there weren't any field bees we're gonna do one more back and then we're gonna head up put everything in the truck and I'll give you a show of what we did so there's all our bees and I got them in the Sun right now heating them up and it's really got them stirred up at least moving around so I'm headed up to the Abbey we're gonna go ahead and frame up the comb and set them out on the on the stand so we'll pick this back up at the Abbey. I never got a shot of how we were working. We had these nice ladders, the scaffold boards on it. And that's the area that we were working in right there. Now before we get started getting that comb framed up, I want to show you a shot of the bees in the van just pulled up here at the Abbey. And the van's pretty warm in here. So the uh, bees have gotten really active, and can you see our queen? She's in there communicating with the little daughters in there. 
That's why all the bees are clustered up at this end, and you got some running around at this end. But for the most part, they're yeah, right here. I'm going to leave the bees inside the van. It's uh, nice and warm in here. They'll be alright, and it'll be dark. And I'll go ahead and frame up that honey. This is the comb that we took out in this box and in this box as well and we're gonna frame up all of it and the little bit of honey that's that isn't going to be framed up it'll just be fed to our bees i'll just stick the ice chest outside so the first thing i really wanted to talk about is the brood that we took out of that that hive and i'm looking at uncapped brood right here I'm trying to see if I can see any, see any eggs in there. It, it does, I think, yeah, there are definitely eggs way, way in the bottom mm -hmm. here. But they're, they're down in this part. Yep. You see the camera, I don't think that camera's gonna pick them up. But down here, because I can see the little speck of white in that black cell, so there are eggs down in there. But I don't, it's been almost two and a half hours since bees have been on this brood. But regardless of, of that fact, I'm still going to frame this stuff up because I want, I want the bees to get on their brood. And in, I think instinctively they'll do that, and w which will be another reason for them to want to stay inside of that box that I'm, I'm getting ready to put them in, as well as I'm going to have their queen in there. So we're going to go ahead and frame this stuff up, and hopefully it'll all work out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that little piece of brood comb as well as this piece of honeycomb in there into the one frame. And again, orientation is always important. And I know I, I set my comb, when I put it in, inside the ice chest, I always make sure that the top of the comb is up to the top. So as long as I keep that up, my orientation is correct. Here's our first frame. When I put the brood frames in the box. I'm going to put the brood to the center of the box. I'm going to put the brood to the center and all the honey to the outside. <laughs> now this is the other section of brood. There were only two, well, there was only one section of brood in the hive and this is the other part of it because I cut it right almost in half. And look at this. They got a, a bee coming out right now. You have one emerging? Yep. A baby bee. A baby bee. Oh. Hmm. Let me point this out. This is interesting. You see these holes in it? Those are all doorways that the bees use to go between comb. So they don't they don't completely close off the, the comb. And they make the little passageways and that's how they travel in and out of their comb it's through those little openings. Yeah. So we did seven frames that was good enough that we could frame. And what I'm going to do, because our queen, I know my queen is laying already, I'm going to go ahead and drop in three more uh, frames. This is drawn out comb. This was the, the honeycomb. These, these were all honey frames right here. So there's drawn out comb on it. So we know our queen's laying. So I'm going to give her, I'm going to give her room to uh, lay. And I'm going to place these things on either side of the brood. If y'all can hear that dog, guess what? That's Sadie. That's Charlie's little puppy. <laughs> Sadie came up and rang the bees with us. So what I want to do is when, when I release the bees, I don't want to release them right now. I want them to stay in the box. Uh, it's just the temperature, with the robbing, the possibility of robbing, I want to keep these bees closed in. And so because of that reason, I'm going to take our queen and I'm going to rubber band her into a frame, onto a frame. And by having the queen on the frame, then the bees, again, are going to be more likely to, to stay here. All right, so now we're all ready to go. So we're going to go ahead outside now Bring our box out there. It's now Monday afternoon. Saturday when Charlie and I set the box, the uh, vacuum box, 
up and then put the comb on top of it. We did that Saturday and it's been almost 48 hours that the bees have been in lockdown. And one of the reasons I, 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 I like putting them in lockdown for that extended period of time during this time of the year is because of the robbing. Uh, the hive had the comb had a lot of wet comb on it. So it gives them 48 hours for the for the bees to then clean up all that comb without any possibility of other bees coming in, disturbing them or robbing them out or running them out. So I found that by doing it that way, by keeping the bees locked up, particularly during robbing season when there's when, when there's not a dearth, that this is this seems to be a really good way of keeping the, uh, the getting the bees to clean up the hive without being bothered. So what I'm going to do this morning, this afternoon, all I'm simply going to do is take the bees that have now migrated from this box, from the vacuum box, up into the box where their comb is. So I'm going to take this box off, set it on the screen bottom board, then take and remove the vacuum box, move it off, and put the bees, the new hive, back on this position right here. The bees haven't oriented on anything because they're not flying. And then I'll let, them, I'll let them fly and orient on this spot. So we're going to do that and then at the same time remove, release our queen. So let's go ahead and move our brood and honey box over onto our stand right here. And this thing is heavy. And now we're going to go ahead and remove our vacuum box. And here's the screen. There's still some bees on the frame, but we're going to knock all that, all those bees off. Oh, you got to love that that back. Um, I'm looking here. Back. There, there's if there's a dozen bees dead in here. I mean that vacuum cleaner does such a great job on not killing bees. And then all the junk that I vacuumed up, it stays in here. So let's go ahead and set this box up. Get these girls oriented on this spot. Turn our queen loose. box has got a lot of honey in it. It is heavy. All right, the box is situated. So now we're going to go ahead and turn loose our queen. Make myself some room to move in. Oh, they've done a great job cleaning this stuff up. Wow. These are the brood frames right here. I don't know whether that brood is going to make it or not. But also, we have our queen, so we have all the bees on her. So we're going to remove our queen. Make sure she's still in there. Yep, she's in there. And we're going to turn her loose on this frame. She's walking around great. I'm going to turn her loose. Here she comes. Yeah. She's just walking on the cage right now. There you go. Now she's on the frame. Let me walk up to the camera and show you to her. I can't see in that 
lands right now, but there she is. I just hope I'm in frame for you. Is our queen right there? All right, so we're gonna drop this in the box and close this thing up. On Saturday, these frames were all wet and they are completely dry now. So keeping all the bees locked in, it really does work good as far as cleaning up the box. We'll bounce these bees, because all these bees, they're going to just come up and come into the opening. Bounce the box. I'll go on from there. And now let's wait a few minutes and I'll show you when everything calms down what they look like. Now it hasn't even been five minutes and the bees have calmed down already. They, I mean, most of them going in the box. So it was uh, successful. So for our first removal for the year, Charlie and I, I think we did a great job. Bees are set up. I'm, I'm very confident these girls are gonna make it. And truthfully, I think that this queen is, as, as big as her brood pattern was this early on, these bees may be exploding. So I'm gonna keep a close eye on these. So that's all I got for you in this one. Thanks for watching. Keep on watching and I'll be making more. God bless. It's the Red. I'm out of here until the next one. I had to show this. These ice chests have been out here for two days and they pretty much cleaned it out. So the honey is pretty much all gone, but Look at the bees on the feeder, on the pollen substitute feeder. Now they've been on this stuff for almost four weeks now, three weeks.